Halo, we're going to take this aircraft vehicle and we're going to add life to it with mass spring dynamics to add some secondary motion. To begin with, I'm going to grab the aircraft mover. That's the top level game object. I'm going to add a component called dynamic transform filter. And I'm going to drag into the target field an empty game object we've got called target transform. Now, what this is going to do is whenever we move around target transform in play mode, the, uh, the game object which contains this component is going to be simulated towards that target, but going through a dynamics filter. So we get some of that secondary motion, spring dynamics and oscillations. So we have position dynamics as well as rotation dynamics. I'm going to leave the default settings. Let's play this. Now, as I move this, as I move the target transform, you could see our aircraft mover is going to try to follow it, but it's going to bounce around essentially with springiness. And likewise, if I rotate it, we're going to try to solve the orientation towards that target orientation, likewise going through that dynamic filter. Now, if I take this uh, aircraft mover, I could change these uh, settings. So I'm going to change the position dynamics to reduce the strength of that springiness. Let's increase the spring strength as well as the damping. Let's set it five for spring strength and one for damping, let's say. Likewise for, for the rotation effect dynamics, because they're separated. And with that done, you'll see now it converges more quickly and it's less extreme, less springiness. Uh, finally, we've got the concepts of limits. So we're not using limits, but if, if we were to use limits, now for rotation limits, you need to author uh, dynamic joint limits upon the game objects directly. We're not going to do that for now. So it's not going to apply any limits because no joint limits exist. For positional limits, we, we could specify them here. We've got minimum and maximum position limits, which are in the local space of the target transform. Uh, since we're, we enabled use limits, you're going to notice that as I move this um, game object, uh, nothing's going to happen. It'll simply clamp directly to the target transform without, and the deltas are all going to be zero as far as the secondary motion deltas. Uh, however, that's because they're all zeroed, meaning completely clamped. But let's just say we want to have limits along the X and Z axes and clamp them. But along the Y axis, we want some secondary motion up and down, let's say from minus one to plus one in the local frame of the target transform. Now, if I take our tar target transform and move it forward and backwards, it's actually, um, it's clamped. So we don't get any springiness. But if I move it up and down now, we do get springiness, but within the maximum bounds of one to minus one units. And yeah, there you have it. So let's remove limits again for this demo sake. I'm going to copy this component while in play mode. Then I'm going to paste it, paste the values when not in play mode, just to take those values we authored live, for, you know, during live linking. Okay, so that's the top level. Now we wish to simulate the child game objects, because there's a lot of hierarchies here, such as the claws and the wings, also with dynamics separately. I'm first going to introduce the concept of a dynamic joint. I'm going to do it on this claw. So I'm going to look for this claw game object. I think it's called claw shaft pivot. Um, as you can see, I've already pre-authored this dynamic joint limit, but for demo sake, I'm going to remove that component um, and I'm going to add it again. Dynamic joint limit hinge. There's two types, swing twist, which is along three degrees of freedom and joint limit hinge, which is a single degree of freedom. So with that authored, I'm going to align it. Now you can align it manually. Uh, in the in the scene view, there's handlers and manipulators, or I'm going to align, or you can align directly in the specter to a local axis. I'm going to align to X, and I'm also going to set the limit angle to 180. Now this is going to limit the motion of our claw to this one degree of freedom along rotation along one axis, but freely along all of it. And finally, I've got this joint limit. I'm also going to add a component called a dynamic joint. Now our dynamic joint within sources, I'm going to keep that empty because if it's empty, it'll just take the game object, which the component exists on and it'll simulate that with the joint settings. 
similar to the transform filter, we've got position dynamics and rotation dynamics. Um, let's set some values, increase the spring strength and damping. Um, we're going to use limits. Uh, our limits are going to be, let's say we're not going to use position dynamics at all in this case. I'm going to disable use position dynamics so that we only rotate the claw. We don't stretch it uh, along positionally. Now, these settings are similar to the, uh, the transform filter. The only difference here, or the main difference is we have a simulation mode. Now there's two modes, there's spatial relations as well as gravity. Spatial relations, if that's set, will basically try to uh, target the game object position orientation so that it, it preserves its spatial relationships to other points, which you could specify. Uh, in this case, I want to use gravity. I want this to be driven by gravity. I'm going to set a gravity of minus two for now on the y-axis as a force. Um, and yeah, so with that done, I'm going to press pre-process. That's going to generate the particle. You'll see in the scene view, we can actually see a representation of the particle. Now we've got this point here, which we could select. Um, this point represents the direction of the center of mass takes the forward axis of the game object by default. Again, there's no sense of the hierarchy. Otherwise, we need to specify where the center of mass is going because it's a single point. You can see I can move it, but if anything, and you could, yeah, modify it with, when it's selected, you can modify it in the inspector as well. If anything, that looks correct. That's the center of mass direction. That's what should be swinging towards the direction of gravity. Um, I'm going to deselect that and let's play and yeah we've got limits applied as well and as you can see um it gravity is operating as i move this you'll see that you know we've got the secondary motion due to gravity uh finally what i can also do is i can grab this the claw shaft pivot which has our joint and I can also add positional dynamics except in this case I'm going to add drag actually I'm going to add drag on a value for drag on rotation dynamics and on position dynamics uh, to simulate the air resistance as we're moving uh, as we're flying and also I'm going to set a limit of minus 0.5 to 0 0.5 on the local Z axis, which is in the frame of the gravity direction. So this is basically saying along the gravity direction, uh, we can also stretch uh, backwards and forwards 0 0.5 units. So those are the limits and clamped in every other direction positionally, stretch wise. So now as I move the target transform, you're gonna see that we could stretch as well within those bounds and not only stretch, but we can rotate too, you see? So that's how we set it up. Um, I can also likewise go in and just to, so you could see it happening live, I'm going to add an additional gravity of two in the Z direction. And you'll see that, yeah, it's, it's respecting gravity. If I decrease the strength, strength of the, uh, the spring strength of dynamics, you should see more of a bouncy effect. Well, actually, the drag is really powerful here. Oops, I set it to nine instead of zero there. Yeah, and there you go. Okay, so I'm going to exit and I'm going to remove this dynamic joint because what I've done is in advance, I've already authored a number of top level game objects. The difference is I made them top level and I added the game objects that they should affect individually so that we could share these values upon all these game objects. So all of these game objects get have joint particles uh, generated. So I've got this thing called claw dynamics and I've got my two claw game objects so I don't have to recreate it for each one. Um, and then I press pre-process so you could you know, generate the effects. And I, I set those settings in advance. Um, I'm going to hide it for wing dynamics, uh, for claw base dynamics. I've also set it up for the parent. The difference here is I'm also going to add along its local 
y axis and a stretch left and right so the shoulders can move left and right i've also got gravity applied um so and the base dynamics are on joints which are actually parents of the claw dynamics and essentially you can create hierarchical setups and they respect each other the, the hierarchy is respected as you could see and because they have different dynamic settings they move with different behaviors actually in this case i'm going to re-add the drag there you go now finally i've got this thing called wing dynamics which I'm going to enable. And for wing dynamics, I've applied it to four different game objects, which are the uh, the fan bases either side, as well as the wing bases either side. And I've disabled position dynamics. And what I've done is instead of... So I've, I've used gravity mode for this uh, object in particular. But instead of using a gravity force... I've reset that force to be zeroed. I've zeroed it out. And instead I'm using something called mass inertia. And what mass inertia does, and that's the strength of the mass inertia that we're using, a value of four here for now. Let's set it to three. Is that it takes the, um, the, the orientation and position of these game objects relative to their parent frames. And it tries to preserve them in the simulation while going through the uh, dynamic simulation or the dynamics filter to get that springy motion and the secondary motion effects, but with a sense of weight shift, because they're still uh, mass spring particles eff effectively. They're being simulated that way. So instead of gravity, the force isn't in, an, in a single direction. The force is actually towards their desired relative locations relative to their parents. And it gives us a sense of um, weight shift. So let's play this. I'm going to remove the limits usage for now. There. Okay, so I'm going to move this up and down. As you could see, we have a sense of weight shift and secondary motion on the wings as well, even though they're rigid objects. So already we've added a lot of life to this. Um, it's a bit clunky, but that's for demo's sake. I'm making it a bit more extreme. But uh, we can always go into the wing dynamics and change the value of the mass inertia so it more strongly follows it and more quickly. Oops, uh, my bad. I just rotated a bit extremely there. Yeah, you can see with the stretch limits, we we're going left and right for the, the base dynamics. So I added those stretch limits to be only for left and right. And then up and down also for the claws. And the wings are also jumping around based on when you rotate as well as when you move them as well. You know, you could feel that shift of momentum that way. Uh, finally, I'm going to also go into the wing dynamics and enable limits. Now, just to demonstrate these limits, I've, if I select each particle, when you select them in the uh, scene view, uh, there's an additional inspector uh, section that shows up. You could press go to game object and we could see these joint limits. So I've got a hinge limit here. If I go back, I've got on the base of the wings, I've actually got uh, swing twist limits instead. So the limit angle is 10. I'm going to set that to 20. I've set the, let's set the twist to zero. And actually the limit height ratio is set to 0 0.5 here, which means on the one degree of um, freedom, it's, it can only travel half of the other degree of freedom, i.e. 10 degrees left and right and 20 degrees up along pitch. Um, let's set that to one just so we have a bigger range of motion. And I'm also going to select this one and do the same thing. Well, 20 degrees and zero degrees for the twist limit. And with that done, I'm going to also enable use limits. So we're using a rotational limits. And now the same effect that we've been seeing before, except for bounded by those joint limits. And there you go. Um, we've honestly added quite a bit of life to this game object. Uh, 
and the best part of it all is the simplicity. That's the winner here. Uh, we don't have to go through a physics system at all. We just add these components in our game objects and it just works out the box and it's performance and efficient. Um, and very simple and easy to set up. The last thing I want to demonstrate is if I take the same wing dynamics, I want to demonstrate the spatial relations mode. Now, if I, I'll set the mass inertia to zero. Well, actually, it's not going to be used anyway. So if I change this from gravity to spatial relationships, then the target relative to can be to custom points, meaning points that we choose, or their parent space. So I'm going to keep parent enabled. And what that's going to do is it's going to try to simulate the orientation of these um, game object to be uh, preserved relative to their parents. But because we're not using gravity and we're, we won't be treating it as a, you know, a particle with mass, which should, uh, you know, which has a center of mass direction, meaning when I set that as a simulation mode and I start moving the, um, the transform up in positionally, nothing will happen. But when I rotate, you'll see that we're going to get a simulation where the wings are going to try to solve their orientations relative to their parent spaces. The effect is a bit cleaner, at least rotationally, uh, because of the way it's implemented. But we do lose a bit of that weight shift effect positionally. And yes, it does respect, of course, um, the, um, the joint limits. There you go. And you can use a sequence of these or a number of different settings for different game objects to really uh, set up something that you can really bring to life, even if it's a rigid object like a mech and that kind of thing. We can You can add those clunky effects and so on. Um, so yeah, there you have it. That's our demo. Thank you for watching.